Amazing. This conference will now be yeah. recorded. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the, this phone call is now being recorded. Before we move to Marta and Madeleine, who are very kindly joining us from Delft University um, of Technology from Netherlands, I just wanted to give you a very quick feedback. So um, we were having a survey where we were asking you how you wish us to run um, these virtual monthly chats. And um, we had a good response from you. Um, so thank you very much. A majority of you said, 36% um, said he would be interested to hear the knowledge exchange from other universities. So this is something we are piloting today, something new we would like to try for you. And hopefully uh, for the months to come, we'll have other institutions who will be willing to join um, their case studies with us. And uh, then you also mentioned that you're interested in the updates from DMP Online. And would you like to get this as a space for you to uh, chat and ask questions. The other comment you just said was that, for example, some of you would like to see the agenda before the meeting. So if this will be possible, I'll definitely do, do that uh, for the meetings to come. I unfortunately didn't have the time to do this um, before today's meeting, but if this is something you're interested in, we can definitely do that before the meetings to come. And there is the interest to find out more about the developments and timescales for the conditional questions, which is one of the things we are currently working on. Or for example, um, just learning how to query and pull data via the API and other things. So again, um, it's always great to hear your feedback. So please get in touch with us. We can always uh, use these sessions for this, but we are always more than happy to also answer the emails for you. So whatever works for you, um, just get in touch with us. So if this is okay for everyone, um, we can just move now to Marta and Madeleine uh, from Delft University of Technology from Netherlands, and they will just um, share how they use the DMP online at their institution, if that's okay for you. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, I'm Madeleine de Smale. I am a um, member of the Research Data Services team of the TU Delft Library in the Netherlands. And uh, well, I would be happy to uh, tell you a little bit about the DMP online implementation uh, in our university. Um, well, we only recently introduced DMP online, so we are now only uh, providing it for a few months to our researchers. And um, well, the main, the most important reason for providing DMP online as a service, as a tool, is that we noticed that data management plans uh, were becoming increasingly important. Um, and also the data management support, the support on that uh, to help researchers writing their data management plan uh, uh, is becoming uh, much more important. Uh, I have to say that our team, Research Data Services, is providing the tool. So I am, um, I am responsible for, um, for managing the tool and I am the organizational admin for the tool. So I, am, uh, so I make changes to the tool, to the templates, to the guidance or uh, anything like that. Where our TU Delft data stewards, our faculty data stewards are responsible or are actually providing the support uh, in writing uh, the data management plan. So that is an, um, so you have to know that these roles are, uh, that these roles are um, organized uh, in this way in our university. Um, so when we, in, when we uh, decided to introduce DMP online, um, it, it's, we were also forced to look at our own workflow, at our, our support more carefully, because we want to provide a, uh, a tool that uh, would be as efficient as possible for the researcher, but also for research support staff involved uh, in providing the support. So it was important for us that we had a tool in which um, also the requirements of the university, of the funders and legis legislations as the new rules on GDPR were integrated. So when rethinking that whole process, we very much looked at the work of the University of Manchester, who did a great job, uh, we believe. Um, and well, following a bit the same methods, um, we uh, created a new data management 
plan template for the TU Delft, um, uh, in which all questions related to ICT, to the to ethics, to the to privacy, to security um, uh, are covered. So now the template our TU Delft institutional template uh, consists of two main sections. One section with general questions about data management plan, without the data management of research data, and the second question, uh, data management uh, for um, for uh, personal research data. Um, well, how does the process uh, look like? Um, well, as said, we are only working with DMP online for a few months, so it's still the detail still uh, needs to be worked out, but in, 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 in general, when a researcher starts writing a data management plan, then the data stewards will be alerted through the API. Uh, at that time, the data stewards um, can contact the, the researcher and offer him or her uh, support on writing the data management plan. When a researcher uh, submitted uh, or fills uh, data management plan, he can ask for feedback uh, through the EMP online uh, by using that request feedback button, of course. And then the data steward will be uh, alerted that um, there is a request for feedback. Um, and when there, um, and in the data management plan, when there are questions related to uh, personal research data, and um, uh, and at that time, uh, when he feels that type of question, the researcher will be um, alerted that he had to contact the ethics committee, and for uh, and. If appropriate, also to the data, uh, if there is a uh, data protection uh, impact assessment needed, um, he is also be notified that he has to contact the privacy team. And the other way around, when uh, a researcher uh, submits uh, the ethics application, the ethics committee will, uh, will check if there is a data management plan for his project and um, if that a data management plan has been has been checked um, or approved by the data stewards. So that is in, in uh, how our process uh, works works now and also other uh, support staff from other departments yeah, like the privacy team um, uh, can comment on the plan um, when he or she is assigned the reviewer role. So that is how it is. Um, how we work with it now. And well, for the future, um, we, we, um, we yeah, will we'll, we'll continue to work with, with, the, with DCC, of course, and with other DMP online users to, to, further, um, to further optimize our workflow, of course, uh, because we see already some, uh, some improvements we can make. For example, um, we are looking very much forward to the conditional questions in the data management plan templates. So researchers are not um, have not to 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 to, um, to look at questions which are not appropriate for his or her project. And we also see some benefits of the the full content API um, by which we can further yeah automate our internal workflow by which we can alert uh, our uh, support staff in other departments in a more automated way. Um, but we see, I think we see DMP online very much as an, um, as a, as a, an important tool for us to, um, to further optimize and, and our whole data management plan support in the university uh, in general. Okay, that's a little bit, um, ja, yeah, de story of, um, of het TU Delft. <laughs> That was very interesting, Marlon. Thank you very much for sharing this. Um, I'm not sure whether to open some space. If anyone has some questions, feel free to do so now or feel free mm -hmm. to just drop a line in a chat. 
If not, um, we can just continue with the session where Sarah can just update you on a few few things on her end. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to just drop them in the chat and we can answer them as we go. Yeah, certainly. Um, and one thing um, I did in the chat, so while, while you were talking there, um, I, gone, I went through your agenda. Um, uh, and started to kind of pull that out into a document for people to see. So I can share my screen if if you like. Can people oh. see that now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So this will give you a sense of, of kind of what we've got on the plan for today. Um, so yeah, thank you from from me too to to Madeline. I think that's it's really useful to hear how different universities are, are using the tool and also what you've learned from one another you know that you've looked at manchester's work um so so yeah if people have questions i know sometimes it takes a little bit of time to think up your questions like by all means put them in the chat um as as we continue talking um and we can pick up more about lessons you can learn from delft as well um Oh yeah, so question here for, for Madeline. I was wondering how do the how are data stewards alerted? Um so I guess that's two plans to review. Is that using like um the functionality within the tool to alert them or are you doing something different if you're kind of alerting them to ethics stuff or yeah, no, there are two uh two different uh things. We allure data stewards uh about uh new data management plans submitted by using the API and the mm -hmm. current API does provide, <laughs> does provide administrative information and our developer managed to, uh, um, to make it possible uh, that we are, that an, well, an, every day an email is sent out to the data stewards uh, inbox in which uh, they are alerted that there are new data management plans uh, submitted. Yeah, yeah. That, that's where, where we use the, the the current API, and when the when a, a researcher requests feedback on this API uh, on the, the data management plan, then uh, the, the usual uh, request uh, feedback button is used in the DMP online itself. Yeah, yeah. So actually, so that's something that Manchester Uni had done as well. They use the API to kind of um, pull out information on any new DMPs, um, and that's something we had a user group in Manchester, um, and that seemed of interest to other unis. So, so it's something we could look to to support. You know, if you don't have your own developer resource to, you know, to be pulling out that kind of call, um, it, and it may be that people don't want it every day. You know, depending on how much resourcing you have. You might want like weekly or monthly updates of new DMPs to then start contacting um, the researchers. So, so that that's the kind of thing where it'd be really useful to get your feedback. Um, you know, if you want that as an added feature, we can um, do that API extension. Yeah, so so we could definitely build it into like the back end, so we just generate that email without other people having to hit the API, um, or we could kind of open source the code to make it easier for people to access the API and create that sort of email uh, content for themselves. Yeah. Great, thanks, Sam. Um, uh, yeah, so if, if you have preferences on what you would want, um, you know, either say here or drop us an email or um, just let us know. Okay, um, so I'll, I'll move on with um, question section three, the updates, but um, by all means type in more questions as we go along or, or unmute yourself if you want to ask something directly. So in terms of the updates, um, there's a few things that have been going on. Um, we have been recruiting for a new developer so that Sam's got a full-time person um, working alongside him. Um, and actually, I don't know the current status. I haven't checked with Kevin. Um, we had very strong applicants. Um, we will definitely be taking one person. Um, we're actually looking at the budget. We're, we're hoping we can make the case to actually take on two developers because we had really strong candidates. Um, so potentially that might happen, um, but I haven't um, managed to speak to Kevin in the last kind of 24 hours to check where that's at, but we did the interviews on Monday. Um, so hopefully um, we will have somebody in, in in the coming months. Um, 
I mean, the, there's a potential that it will be three months notice period, but hopefully we can have it shorter than that. Um, there's the July newsletter, which um, I'll open up here, but Magdalena, I don't know if you want to speak through this. Oh, let me click. Yeah, sure. No, um, um, oh, it's opened in Internet Explorer, which will probably look horrible. Um, <laughs> here we go. So the, the latest July news. Uh, yes, so this is our July newsletter. In a case you haven't seen it, um, we were just talking that our DMP online team is growing and we have been joined with Killian, who is working with us over the summer and he is taking the work on the conditional questions and also in the meantime um i'm not sure how much you are aware of our um shared code base and um, we there, there was a new hiring in dmp tool um and this was a replacement for stephanie uh, her name is maria and basically her role is similar to sarah's where she's just coordinating things on her end mm -hmm. and then we we were announcing but this is already something sarah uh, covered we are looking for the new software developer so hopefully we'll be having someone joining us uh, sometime soon we always just uh, make a little summary from these uh, drop-in sessions so in case you miss them and you are not subscribed to the newsletter feel free to subscribe to the newsletter so you can see what we were chatting about and um, in the UK we finalized the phasing out and um, so in the UK we started phasing out I think sometime around March and at the end of August institution who have not subscribed um, for you know the admin access basically their um, admin access has have been already seized and then we shared some uh, software updates with you about our latest release. Um, so again, um, there is a link in the chat, so feel free to have a look at uh, what we released for you. And um, there were some things from the recent user groups. So uh, sorry, some requests from the recent user groups. So hopefully um, the latest release is already work working well for you. And uh, Georgina Parsons, um, um, she, she was working with us uh, um, from Cranfield University, was sharing uh, a blog post about how they go about using DMP online at the University of Cranfield. So definitely have a look if you would like to read about their experience um, at their institution. And as every month we are sharing some, uh, we are sharing how to videos about short features. And this month in our latest release, we were having a release um, where we added a new functionality of adding a department. So this video is just really going through the steps of how you go about adding the department for your institution. And I think at the end of this, yes, we were just sharing some dates for your calendar. So um, we are going to run um, RDMF on the 16th of September at the British Library and I'll actually talk a little bit more about this and once I run through this newsletter and we were announcing as well that we'll be having DMP online user group on the 17th and also announcing when our next drop-in session chat is going to be. Excellent. Thank you very much, Magdalena. And the other um, update before I hand back over um, is just to let you know, I think some of you may know already, I'm, I'm in Australia at the moment. Um, so I'm doing a placement for a couple of months with the Australian Research Data Commons, um, which is um, it's kind of a parallel organization to the European Open Science Cloud. Um, so I've been meeting with them and kind of been based in their offices. But I've also had a number of meetings with people who run DMP tools over here. Um, and in this blog post, I kind of give a, a summary of, of what I've been learning. Um, it's been really very interesting because the data management planning kind of sphere is quite different over here. They don't have all of the um, funder requirements that we have in Europe. So funders allude to you know an encouragement to to write some kind of plan but there's no templates there's no strong stick um, there's no kind of mandate that people need to develop a plan but there are still data management tools and the tools that they have are really a lot more about the management of data rather than just the planning so they cover the planning phase but they also cover often the allocation of storage and um, they usually um, do things like they might be linked in with lab notebooks or um, repository systems so that they're trying to essentially 
capture everything in one tool, um, make sure they've got the metadata and then be able to publish the data at the end. Now, they haven't all got to that kind of final stage. Most of them, they've got a basic planning system and they're allocating storage and then they've got the data in this system, well, or a record of the data in the system, but they haven't really um, figured out the kind of um, the selection of data and the publishing. But I think there's a lot we could learn from their examples. I, I really like the way that essentially they're linking things to the implementation, not not just the um, you know the plan itself. Um, and one thing I think towards the end of this, I, I mentioned um, the RDA plenary is going to be here in March of 2020. And I've been discussing with some of the people who are doing DMP work over here about having a, a kind of co-located workshop. I think that would be really good just so that we can learn more about the Australian context, but also see where ways in which we can collaborate. So if people are involved in RDA and likely to be a you know that event or have ideas of things that they would want fed into that, because there's always a lot of remote links for RDA events. Um, you know, let us know and we can try and work together on a, a program that meets everyone's needs. The other thing that I flagged in here um, is some discussions we'd had kind of while I was over here with the OPIDOR team um, in France. So they have a national instance of DMP online that they run themselves um, and they've made some really nice extensions to the tool. So they, they for instance, on the um, templates page like where you can see the different funder templates they've added a button that lets you create a plan in one click so you literally just click create an ahrc plan and it takes you know all of your details your organization details and your user details from your profile and generates that plan for you um, and then you can just start filling it in so it it skips some steps um, which is really nice. And they've also been doing things about looking at adding data sets to DMP so you can record individual data sets and um, an API extension to pull out the themes. So then you can start to look for questions that are about metadata or about sharing or storage. Um, Benjamin, the main developer there, is on holiday over summer. Um, we had a call literally just before he went away. So when he comes back, we're going to be liaising with them and getting pull requests. Um, I think some of these things, the one-click plan creation is a really lovely feature. Um, and that, from a first look at it that we've done, I, I think it doesn't really need any user testing. I think it's something that we could add straight in. Some of the other things you might want to feed back on the approach um, before we kind of put that into a live service. But I think there's some really nice work that's gone on there. Um, the other thing, this is kind of not news to you, but I did a webinar um, yesterday on um, kind of lessons from Europe in terms of data management plans. Um, it might be of interest, so by all means, have a look at the slides from that and the kind of trends that I, I picked up on. But uh, yeah, that's all I'd put in that blog. Um, <laughs> So I'll hand you back to Magdalena to talk about the upcoming events and then I guess any Q&A you've all got. Okay, great. Thank you, Sarah. And thanks for sharing um, all the great stories and things you have been working on. Um, so we are having two events coming up uh, in September and you, you might already seen the invites or us promoting this on the social media. We will be running the RDMF on the 16th of September at the British Library. Um, and this is going to be a whole day event. The main theme is going to be costing data management and um, we are inviting funders um, for the morning. So um, there should be, and we have actually an agenda. I'm not sure whether we shared the link. Yeah, sorry, the I'll, um, I'll open this up so that okay. people can see it in the background. So yeah, we've got, um, there'll be a couple of panels. We've got a funder panel. We've got a couple of funders already, um, HRB and Wellcome Trust. We've asked um, a couple of funders from UKRI, so we'll hopefully have a UK funder. Um, the EC are trying to confirm who um, out of their group can speak. Um, and we have actually approached some other funders um, uh, from the Nordic countries, um, actually NWO um, and a Swiss funder. So um, I doubt they'll all be able to confirm, but hopefully we'll have, you know, like, five or possibly six funders um, speaking. And the intention there is to, to get, um, essentially just to get 
different perspectives from across Europe, but also different disciplinary perspectives, because some of them like, you know, HRB are naturally, you know, a health funder. They're very big on, on the fair angle, um, whereas others are, you know, social sciences. And then in terms of um, the institutions, um, we've got um, four speakers agreed um, from Manchester, Helsinki, um, Delft, and also from the ESRC to, to get that angle from a data centre on how they are supporting researchers. So that kind of aligns with, uh, you know, hopefully what some funders would say as well. Um, yes. So they're the speakers and then the rest of the event is kind of um, more open for networking over lunch and for people to um, develop ideas in the young conference session around either resources that we need or, or certain questions that need to be resolved around the costing. Yeah, okay. And I'm not sure, <laughs> does it cover the 16th, Sarah? Can I just mention briefly the 17th then? Yeah, yeah, that covers yes, the 16th okay. and okay. then the 17th, the user group. <laughs> So on the 17th of September, we'll be running a user group. Um, and I, again, I've been promoting this on the social media and was trying to get in touch with people. So um, in case you are interested to join us, uh, please let me know just so I can keep a track of the numbers for the people who are joining us on the day. We will be running this at a London School of Economics in London the following day. Um, most likely the timing will be sometime probably after half past nine. Um, till lunchtime. Again, I don't have the final agenda just yet, but I'll be sharing this uh, later with the attendees who will confirm um, that they will be coming and we'll be heading for lunch afterwards. Basically, um, we are using this as a space for you to talk to each other and talk to us as well. Um, so we can gather some feedback for new features. And in a case there is something you are not sure about or some functionalities, we are more than happy to demo something we have been working on. We, we might already be able to show you some of the conventional questions for the day, um, which I think would be nice feature to showcase on the day for you. And um, it's gonna be, since it's in London, I was getting quite good response, not just from the UK, but there should be um, some attendees coming also from Helsinki and probably from Sweden as well, so, and from Netherlands as well. So um, I think it's gonna be quite nice just having, um, you know, um, administrators from different countries uh, from Europe coming to London and just having the ability to network and really share um, how you go about DMPs um, in Europe. So I, I think it's a good networking opportunity as well. So that that covers the 17. So again, um, I would like one, to say... One thing, yeah? go on, one sure. thing just to flag, because I haven't seen those emails, so I don't know whether they included this, um, but we do a social around the DMP online user group. Um, so if people are coming in from another country, um, if you want to join, you may want to get there earlier on, you know, like tea time on the 16th, because um, we're planning to go um, to um, like Tempin Bowling. There's a place, um, where is it? Tavistock? God, I Tavistock, can't remember what it's called yeah, now. Correct. Yeah, Tavistock something. That's quite central. Tavistock Lanes. It's, yeah. it's in Bloomsbury, so it's not far from the British <laughs> Library. Um, and yeah, so we we try and do a social. We did axe throwing last time, which was quite good fun. <laughs> um, but we thought we'd go for something uh, less difficult <laughs> this time. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll have like a bowling a bowling night where people can just get together and just hang out, and share ideas and stuff. Okay. Um, so again, we are opening the space for you. If you have any questions, I haven't actually checked the chat. Yeah, so the, uh, one thing that came in on chat that maybe Helen wants to clarify, you mentioned that we've listed the user group wrongly as UCL somewhere. I'm not sure where yeah. that was, if it's yeah, online I think, or... I think it's in the DMP online newsletter for July. I think I spotted it there. Oh, right. Okay. Right. We'll check that. Yeah. So oh, the, <laughs> it's a London School of Economics. So still the same city, but different university. <laughs> That's my fault. We'll, Apologies for this. We'll get that corrected. Um, and then somebody, has somebody put a question here about, oh, just from Joachim, um, an email advance. Yeah. So just putting in about um, how you'd like to use the API to pull out user information to then kind of yeah do some analysis on that. Uh, yeah, 
I posted this because I, I tried to mail mail you, as you can see there in, in the chat, to this. Yeah, it's, sorry, that's bound. So, but, and this is not the first time I'm mentioning this, but uh, we would like to be able to get uh, the DMPs uh, uh, in XML to mm -hmm. construct our own validation schemas. Uh, and also, uh, in that way, we would be able to to check compliance with our general data research data policy here at Stockholm University. Uh, so that would be a good uh, use case, I think, for us. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, we actually, we did used to export um, into JSON, so I don't think it should be problematic to be able to export yeah. in, into um, XML. Um, yeah. I see Madeleine's asked a question. We might not have the developers on the line because they've, um, oh. Sam's just message saying they're being kicked out of the room. Um, but I can give you an update of what I know about um, the, full, the full text API. Yeah um is is actually live um we still need to update the guidance on how to use it um but we can certainly reach out and and walk you through how to do that if necessary um and the conditional questions um Gillian has been working on on that and he's got a yeah replicating whole sections yeah. mm -hmm. what's sorry was there a yeah, and uh, the, the conditional questions, but also the replication of parts of the templates. So ah, you can... right. Okay. Yeah. So that yeah. So we haven't done anything on the the replication of um, like whole sections. So mm -hmm. that idea about you know like if you want to add a section um, to a, like custom section to a, a template, being able to do that once and apply it across all. Um, that is still like a feature to come um, and potentially that's something that either if there's time um, after the conditional questions Killian could pick up or when we have the new developers in um, that's definitely something we'll get through quicker then. Um, Sam's been quite busy because we've had quite a lot of subscribers. Um, Sam's been quite busy setting up everyone's like custom um, domains and also um, another piece of work that we've been working on um, is moving to Amazon Web Services with the whole Brexit looming. Um, so the, we have it, have our service deployed there rather than on Edinburgh servers, just so that we know the data is all still within the EEA. Um, so there's been a couple of things where he's not really had time to do feature development. Um, but yeah, they are definitely on the roadmap and things we'll be working on. And the conditional questions where we're up to so far, um, Killian spec'd all that out and has done essentially the, the main part of the first draft, um, which he hopes to have out next week. So that's something we can start to then get. We'll do our for kind of UAT on it first, make sure things are clear enough before we pass it out to all, to all of you. Um, but yeah, we should have stuff that we can either have agreed or, or talk about more at the user group as well. I see Sam's just arrived. So Sam, um, <laughs> possibly you joined in from a booth or something. Um, I was just giving an update on um, the conditional questions and the full text API. Um, I don't know if there's anything you want to say about either of those. The, the full text API is available, but we, we're still to update the guidance, um, I think. Uh, yeah, we still need to update the guidance on the full text API, and I uh, need to add some more features to it, like uh, some some filtering rules. Um, oh, okay. We couldn't hear Sam you're very, very well. You're very, yeah, you're very faint, Sam. Um, so oh, he sorry. said um, he, he needs to add some feed filtering um, to the full text API. Um, when uh, approximately do you think this might be done just because uh, two of our developers were quite keen to, to test it out? I think you're talking about date filters as well, if I'm correct, and they were quite keen to experiment. So if you could perhaps give us a pink once that's done, our developers are happy to test it out. Okay, that would be awesome. Yeah, it's the date filters that I was wanting to add in. Uh, and then maybe some additional scoping where you can like pass a list of email addresses and only get those users' plans or other things like that. So that would be great. Do you think approximately when this might happen so that they can plan it in their agendas? 
I, I don't off the top of my head, but I can uh, send you guys an update uh, w when I know. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Oh. Okay, good. And one one thing we will be looking at with the API once Benjamin's back from from holiday is the work he'd done around the themes as well. Um, so possibly that's that's another thing that we could liaise with you on if your developers are seems are quite active on using the API. So they might be interested in you know being able to scope out the themes and pulling out certain content that way. Okay, so we'll we'll make a note and give you an update on that, Marta. Um, any other questions other people have? Yeah, I'd um, oh, sorry, it's Helen from LSE. Yeah. yeah, I just put in about um, whether or not has anyone brought up the um, idea of a feature for uploading documents into DMP online. So we have a lot of researchers that have special agreements with data providers. Um, where we want to check that they're storing the data properly, but we don't want to necessarily ask them to repeat information. Um, so it'd be really useful to be able to upload existing documents, or if someone's already written a data management plan um, elsewhere outside DMP Online to have an upload feature. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so the only time we've been asked for upload in the past is um, one mm -hmm. on like AHRC where they asked for a gun chart. Um, so sometimes people yeah. have like visuals that they want to upload. So I think that actually that came up in Helsinki. There's something the Finnish funder was asking for in a similar vein. Um, yeah, yeah I, I can see I can see the use case of uploading documents. And I, I think that that should be feasible. Um, Sam, is there anything from a technical perspective that would make that difficult or? Uh, I guess like the what kind of format would we be uploading? Would these just be like PDFs, so they would be static? Uh, yeah, it would just be PDFs. I was thinking, yeah, it would just be PDFs of uh, data agreements or, or existing plans. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of the use case. Yeah. Yeah, that would be fairly doable. Yeah, and I think if we wanted to like incorporate the same thing for like that previous request we had about Gantt charts. There, I mean, it probably could be a PDF or maybe some kind of like image file, um, like a PNG. And I guess with your use case, Helen, it would be a, um, at a planned level. For the others, it might be on a particular question or something. But yeah, I think that should be something that yeah. we could raise a ticket on and add to Yeah, the I was thinking of it at the top, at the top level, really, within a plan. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. And I think there was another question from Chris, was there? Yeah, about API filtering and if that could be done by Funder. Uh, yeah, definitely could. Um, we would just need to add that functionality. So we currently export or we filter your organizational plans from the statistics API uh, by Funder. So we could apply that to the um, the full text API or the, the metadata one for the plans as well. Excellent. Okay. Lots of nice ideas today that we can um, add to, you know, <laughs> add to tickets and follow up on. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm not sure whether we have any more questions, but if you do have any questions, feel free to always drop us an email at dmponline at tcc.ac.uk. Um, I'm not sure whether we can slowly wrap up. Uh, do you have anything mm -hmm. else, Sarah, or anyone else you would like to add? Yeah, no, nothing else from me. Yeah, go ahead, Sam. Uh, hi, um, could I ask a quick question, please? Of uh, this would yeah, be a really, yeah. uh, a really simple uh, feature um, that might avoid some confusion. I'm, I'm happy to submit via GitHub if it helps. Um, on the page when users create a DMP, at the moment, the wording is select the primary research organization. And this has confused some of our researchers where uh, we're working in collaboration with another organization and where our organization is the COI rather than the PI. Uh, okay. So a very simple solution would just be to change the wording to something like select your research organization, just drop the word primary. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. The, 
the effect of people being confused um, if they don't put your institution in it means that they don't get to see the institution's own DMP guidance or our local institutional template um, or any uh, uh, outline sort of pre-phase questions that we add. So it's a, it's a very simple small change but it can really uh, improve or stop our researchers missing useful guidance. Yeah, no, that's a really important point. Um, and we can easily, very easily change that wording um, and just take out primary. Because I mean, really, what what that that box is meant to be about selecting your own organisation and it defaults to the user's own organisation. Um, so yeah, I think that's something that's a change we can make very easily. Yeah. That do you want me to submit that in and to, to write that in for you or are you happy to take it away? Um what what would you I'm conscious that like I'm not gonna act on it right now because it's late at night. Um what would you prefer, Magdalena Sam? Um do you do you want that submitted as like a ticket or can we just submit that yourself just now? We can submit it ourselves, it's not a, a big one. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just make a note because actually, there's a few i there's a few ideas that have come out um come out here that that we'll kind of record and do tickets on. Um, and actually, that one might not even need a ticket because we can just <coughs> keep it changed. like the, the, the thingy we think. Um, but yeah, like you say, that's quite a that's quite a easy point of confusion for researchers. Um, so yeah, it's good to clarify that. And actually that that create plan wizard page, you know, I think people have said in the past that sometimes they have to talk people through how to use it. So we're happy to redesign things like that. If it's not working in your context, you're the ones dealing with DMPs on a day-to-day -day basis. So you'll have better ideas than us about how to structure that. Um, so do you always give us suggestions. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. Okay, so just, was, yeah, go on, sir. Yeah, uh, I have another question uh, about that page. When you, you for the select the primary funding organization, is that connected to the templates? Yeah. Because I can't find any of our uh, primary <laughs> funding organizations. Uh, yes. Okay. So that's so that's a good point. That's probably an, another point of confusion. So the only funders that come up in that list are funders who have um, a template in the tool. So mm -hmm. we haven't added Swedish funders. I mean, we're happy to mm -hmm. if, if there's templates that you want added. Um, but yeah, again, people will think, well, my funder's not listed there. So. Mm -hmm. What what happens with the logic of the tool if it, if they pick funder not listed, they can um, they'll get like the default template. But it's probably confusing because I'm guessing the Swedish Research Council yeah. has a DMP template. Um, not maybe sure not. But there uh, we have others like the Formus that's oh, okay. a template at least. Uh, I don't know if they're using it still. But uh, uh, okay. and, and it probably will be templates coming up soon. So, mm -hmm. so I was just wondering yeah. about the connection there between template and yeah. And actually, so we've we've got an increasing number of Swedish users as well. So yeah. what we should probably do um, is maybe you know host a little meeting or get together with all of you to ask mm -hmm. you you know what what do you want in the tool. Um, yeah. You know, what are the, is there like a de facto Swedish template the way they have in, in Finland, like the Academy of Finland one, or, you know, are there different things that we should represent? Because you know your kind of national level mm. context better than we do. So if you point us to relevant templates, we can certainly add them. That's not a mm. problem. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thank you. Are we having any other questions? 
Okay, so I'll just wrap up. Um, there was one more question just coming up. Where will be the recording of the session? So I'll need to see how big it is and where will be the best place for me um, to share this. So I don't know, I suggested I might just put it on YouTube. I'll see again where will be the best platform to share this on because I'm not sure where I'll be able to upload this to. Um, but I'll announce this for you. Um, I'm not sure whether, again, all of you are following us on Twitter. If not, and you have a Twitter account, do follow us at DMP Online. We do have a Facebook account as well. I think we share the links with you in the chat. I'm happy to, again, copy and paste the links in here. And uh, we do have our monthly newsletter as well. So in the monthly newsletter, I normally um, share a summary from our drop-in chats, but I might just promote where I put the recording of the session as well. So um, I'll definitely let you know either on the social media or in the newsletter or most likely in both where the recording from today's session is. And uh, just to sum up, uh, our next drop in meeting is going to be on the 25th of September, half past 10 uh, UK time, the same time as today. And I'm sharing the date and the link with you in the chat. And I would like to say again, Matthew, thank you for very last minute um, and joining us from Delft to Madeline and Marta. Thank you again for sharing and thank you. Everyone. Thank you so much for this. And um, thank you all for your feedback. It's always very great to speak to you and just see all the feature requests. Thank you very much to Sarah for joining us from Australia. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Um, no, that's been it's been really nice chat today, actually. So that idea of doing the change, I think, works really well. Um, so if others are willing to share, um, do let Magdalena know, and we can kind of schedule them in and and give you time to speak about how you're approaching things. Okay. So thank you, everyone. Um, I'm just going to finish the recording now. And again, if you have any questions we didn't cover today, just drop us an email to dmponline at dcc.ac.uk. And thank you all again for joining us today. Have a lovely afternoon. Excellent. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.